Indochino is the world's most exciting made-to-measure menswear company, and here's how it works. Visit a stylist at their showroom and have them take your measurements personally or measure at home yourself and shop online at Indochino.com. You choose your fabric inside and out, choose your design customizations, submit your measurements with your choices, and relax while your suit gets professionally tailored and mailed to you in a couple of weeks. This week, my listeners can get any premium Indochino suit for just $3.59 at Indochino.com when entering ATH at check Checkout. That's 50% off the regular price for a made-to-measure premium suit. And shipping is free. That's Indochino.com, promo code ATH, for any premium suit for just $3.59 and free shipping. An incredible deal for a premium made-to-measure suit. Indochino are also expanding into casual clothes. Your made-to-measure chinos will quickly become your go-to pant, pairing as easily with a suit jacket as they do with a sweater. And they'll be good any time of year for any occasion, from boardroom meetings to Sunday brunches. Indochinos at an introductory price of $79. My name is Lauren. I'm 33. I didn't want my identity to be the smoking mom. My first experience with Juul, I do remember being like, this is good. It's, it's, it's like a cigarette, but not. I don't miss smoking at all. Like I can officially say it grosses me out. Juul is the tobacco alternative that delivers nicotine satisfaction without cigarette ash or lingering odor. Make the switch at juul.com slash sports. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Dallas Shaw, Yates, Isola, McMullen. Everybody all right? I don't want to step on any toes here. Oh. Dodgers Brewers kick it up a notch. That's a, that's a foul. And maybe running out of pitchers. Sox giving the Astros something to capture on camera. And Jalen on Embiid, okay? What it looked like, and then the realization it wasn't what it was. Ball <laughs> night! Come on, guys. You gotta give me a ball night. Ball night now. Yeah, we got that ball night now. It's Tell around now. the horn. The show of competitive banner. Here's Tony Rielli. It's a dirty play by a dirty player. I play baseball. I go out there, I try to win for my team, so um, if that's their comments, those are their, their comments, so. The Manny Machado play and how or whether it looms over this series going forward is one thing. The 13 innings in 5 hours and 15 minutes of baseball and what happened to both teams' bullpens last night and what happened to both teams' bats and the Dodgers winning 2-1 on the walk-off and the quick turnaround today... Another thing, Tim Callishaw, I'll start with you. How does last night's 13-inning game change how this series is going to go? I think right now it just becomes kind of an anything-goes best of three. I I think the Dodgers were in big, big trouble if they lost last night after getting shut out at home in game three. If they'd have been on the wrong end of a two-to-one, five-hour game, we'd have just thought the Dodger bats are never going to come to life. Mm -hmm. Uh, But now with the series tied and the Brewers having uh, gone to the bullpen for 12 of the 13 innings yesterday because only got one inning from Gio Gonzalez. Uh, they're a little stuck today. But by the time it gets we, – we know it's going at least six. We know by then Josh Hader and the bullpen has had a day off. So I, I don't think the Dodgers have an advantage now. I just think they got back to, to – you know, from the precipice, got back to even. Back from the precipice. Ah, Tim Kalish. <laughs> You've been there before with a lot of your picks. Uh, how about you, Clinton Yates? I think this just makes it a monster start for Clayton Kershaw. All right, he's got 22 career postseason starts. He's at 500. He could opt out after this season. He had a shorter stint of the postseason last start. He was out. This makes this a high-pressure situation for him considering the bullpen scenario. And again, he's believed to be the greatest pitcher that this team has seen in a really long time, but he hasn't exactly been great in October. I think this changes the way that this game looks for him in terms of what he means to the Dodgers, never mind just this team this year. Uh, I'm not laughing at what you're saying, Clinton. Well, maybe I am. But um, everything you said is accurate. It's just we hear this every single Clayton Kershaw start. Last year when they made it through the LCS and then made it to the World Series, well, I guess he's vanquished the demons. He can pitch in the postseason. Then you get back to this year and it's like, oh, he's got to vanquish the demons. And then he has the start he has earlier. <laughs> Keep on doing this. Frank Isola, how about you? A big shout-out to Tim for doing the quick math. It's even. Yes, Tim, it's 2-2, the uh, series. Come on now. Here's the thing. (laughs) You know, when you're... When you get to the playoffs, and we see this all the time, pitching is at a premium. So if you're either manager, who do you want today taking the mound? 
you want Clayton Kershaw. To me, this is a big-time advantage to the Dodgers because you can't keep relying on your bullpen. At some time, at some point, you need an ace to go out there and give you quality innings, and I believe in Clayton Kershaw, especially at home. That's why the Dodgers going into this game, huge advantage. And, Jackie, especially from last night, the 13 innings, the five hours, all the bullpen use, how does that change the outlook of the series in your eyes? Well, it certainly changes the options you have coming out of the bullpen, and particularly Hayter. You're not going to use. I don't think you're going to use him today. He's never pitched three uh, for the next game. He's never pitched three outings in a row like that. Uh, I do find it, uh, Clinton, your your argument about Kershaw so fascinating. So I just want to get it clear. Now that it's two to two, it's like this really really big game. But if they were down to three one, it wouldn't be. No. I mean, wouldn't that be the signature game? Because Kershaw would save the season. Hmm. For the Dodgers, I mean, it's just interesting to me that everything comes back to Kershaw. Wade Miley will go for the for, for the opponent, and we know he's not going to pitch a long time because he hasn't so far, but maybe this is the one time he has to now because of the fact that all these guys out of the bullpen had to burn innings. So okay, I think matter, we need to invite Clinton Yates back into the discussion because, again, what you're saying, 100% accurate about Clayton Kershaw. I was only mocking but, the point that everyone, every storyline is that he needs to always show up for them and be the greatest pitcher of all time. Go ahead. I get that, but he can become a free agent after this year, which is why this has sort of a second level that I'm discussing. If it doesn't work out now, there might be thoughts that he's got to go somewhere else, which is kind of an awkward thing to think about when you're going into a game like this, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm, okay, we need to move on on the Machado play because you can watch a hundred times if you want. A hundred times you're going to see him stick his leg out and spike. Is Machado playing dirty and does he need to change? Frank, you want to start us off there? Oh, c- come on now. You know, you're talking about Clayton Kershaw. Could be his last ever game at Dodger Stadium. Could be the same thing with Manny Machado. And what a way to go out. I mean, you, you know, Alex Rodriguez got criticized big time a few years back when he did that to Bronson Arroyo when he went to slap the ball out of his hands. This is just as worse, if not worse. He knows exactly what he's doing there. That is by that is a dirty play, and there will be re- retaliation, whether it's in Game 5, a spring training game. It is coming for Manny Machado, courtesy of the Brewers. Jackie McMullen. It's a lot worse, Frank, than what A-Rod did because someone could have gotten hurt in this particular case. Now, he's lucky that that isn't the case. There's no question Machado's a dirty player. I saw the the uh, spike of Dustin Pedroia. That was a dirty play. We can list them all, but you know what? Here's the funny thing about it. Manny Machado, Manny Machado is a great baseball player, and it won't stop anybody, I believe, from signing him in free agency. Nobody, probably including the Dodgers. What will be interesting is what Joe Torre says about it. There's no doubt in my mind they won't suspend Machado, but they should give him some kind of warning. That if it happens again, he will get suspended, and then maybe they can stop Tim. some of this nonsense. I don't really think it's a suspendable play. I think it's a stupid play and a disrespectful right. play. I, you know, if, if Aguilar had been on the, writhing on the ground, then it'd be a, a, a play you could suspend him for. I think it's, it's careless. It's silly. There's no reason to be running on the inside of the baseline there. That's not, that's not going to help you in any way. And he just saw an opportunity to do something uh, dumb, and he took advantage of it, if you want to call it that. Jackie, you were talking about the library of video we have of Machado doing things similar to this, whether it's the spike to Pedroia right. or, or slides where his arms are mm-hmm. flailing in the air like he's Elaine Bennis trying to, trying to dance. Uh, <laughs> but he did tell Ken Rosenthal in an interview that hustling – it's not really his deal. You know, he's not Johnny Hustle. And, and he was admonishing himself for this, but he was acknowledging himself for that. So the free agency that's looming, which we brought up, how do you right. think prospective teams hear that, Clinton Yates? I mean, I, look, he's Manny Machado. He's got a cannon and he can mash. If you're telling me that because he's not running out 90 foot, you know, he's not running out to first when he gets rockets to shortstop that you're not going to sign him for extra money, then you need to get a new GM. As for that play, it was Bush. It wasn't quite dirty. I think that's a matter for Dave Roberts, not for the league. Yeah, well, there's a team right here in New York that just lost Didi Gregorius. I think the Yankees could live with it. They might not be happy with it, but they will throw crazy money at a guy like Manny Machado once he becomes a free agent. Mm-hmm. Anyone else want to weigh in on that real quick, Jackie? Of course yeah. they will. Everyone will throw money in because we, we don't care about all these things. What we care about is production. We don't care about decorum and good manners and running out <laughs> fly balls. We never have cared about that. We care about production. Well, you cared enough Monty for the Wonder last 90 Wonder. seconds to wonder if he was going to be suspended well, for a game. We care. But, uh, <laughs> we care, but GMs don't care. Everybody's <laughs> okay. going to line up to sign yeah. this guy. Let's move on. ALCS, Red Sox, eight, Astros, two, just like none of you predicted. The Red Sox have to be the least respected 108-win team in recent history. Jackie, Jackie, Jackie? Yes, sir. Jackie. Yes, sir. 
Yeah. Bradley what? Jr., the two biggest hits of this series. Now the Astros for the first time this postseason needing to answer some questions. Jackie? It was always Jackie. How does five and the eighth by the Red Sox change how this series is going to go? Well, it certainly changes the, fork, the folklore of one Jackie Bradley Jr., who everybody in Boston adores, but the, the rap has always been he can't hit. I mean, he was hitting 160 after a couple of months of this season. Like, 160? Are you kidding me? Now he comes into the most important that bad of his life, where he's one for 17 uh, career it with ba- I mean this past season with the bases full and what does he do? He hits a grand slam, the biggest hit in this series. Which, by the way, the previous biggest hit was the the the, the bases clearing double that he had in the previous game. So would he's you changed say his own advantage narrative. Red Sox now now that they've taken a game in Houston? I will because of this. The bullpen has performed so admirably, and that was something we were all worried about uh, with the Red Sox, and they've really blown everybody away. With TC, how, how about you? I, I give him a small advantage. I still think Verlander is, is the key pitcher in this series, only because yeah. Chris Sale has no been question. hurt and he doesn't throw as many. He's not going to go as long as go as deep as as Verlander. But <clears throat> this showed it's going to be different from last year's ALCS, where Houston owned the games at home against the Yankees, and they really turned the series around in those games. Now they've they've had it. Uh, kind of slapped back at him. And when, when your number nine hitter can do that, and, and Bradley was a good hitter after the All-Star break this year, it just shows how deep that Red Sox lineup is. See why? Yeah, it gives serious questions, too, for Hitch's bullpen. I mean, what are you doing putting Joe Smith in, in that situation who has not been great, hasn't thrown since September, and then Osuna doesn't look good either? That's the reason why I'm worried about the Strohs, because that was something they did so well last year. That's why I'm giving the advantage to the Red Sox. The Strohs have major questions, and they're bully right now. Frank Isola. I'm surprised none of you mentioned it. Once again, a game three, Ivaldi on the road, hostile environment, and you get a big time start out of him. To me, Alex Cora is pushing all the right buttons. They've played three road games, and they have been terrific in terms of timely hitting, bullpen starts, and you know, you to go into use and hold that lineup down like that, that, that's an unbelievable job by the Red Sox starter. And their bullpen. Speaking of the Astros needing to answer questions, we have to talk about this. The Astros <laughs> cheating allegations, which now has reporting from everywhere and multiple instances, it seems. MLB is looking into it right now. If someone from Houston was taking photos or, or video of the Red Sox in the dugout. Cleveland also reportedly alerted MLB last series. The A's reportedly earlier this season. The Dodgers reportedly in the last World Series. The vagary of this is real. The timing of this is immense. Frank, is this a something already, or do we need to you know wait what? and see? Come on, Tony. This has always been a part of baseball. They, they talk about Bobby Thompson shot hard around the world, the Ralph Branca famous play, that there was cheating going on then. So it's a small story. It's a small part of this series. I really don't think it's that big of a deal. You don't Everybody think it's does. a big deal? Okay, well, well let me uh, introduce Jackie by saying, Jackie, you're in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Is this they a big deal? about it. Well, it, I never thought deflating footballs was a big deal or videotaping things, and I learned differently. Five games <laughs> is probably one of the biggest scandals in NFL history. So I don't think this is a big deal, but I guarantee you somebody will make it a big deal. Mm-hmm. Do you think the team is thinking about this in any way? No, I do not. I okay. do not. In Kalisha, fact, they say you? that they were taping it because They're, they thought they this, Red Sox were stealing. Sorry. This may sound like, yeah, this may sound like the state of Texas response to this question, but there's some <laughs> thought that the Astros believe the Red Sox were filming something right. they weren't supposed to be filming, and so the Astros right now, they're taking pictures filming of the their filmer. photographic equipment. <laughs> okay, that would, be, that, would, that would explain Boston, would it explain also Cleveland, would it also explain Oakland, would it explain uh, L.A. from the year before? Let's go one at a time. Let's go one at a time. <laughs> Tim's like, I'm in Dallas, not Houston, baby. Come on, Clint, last word. <laughs> if you don't want people to steal your signs, get better signs. That's how that works. Come on now. What are we talking about? Okay. All right. How's the sign in right now in your score, Yates? 14. You got some work to do. Buy or sell on the other side. Stick around. Jai Sola with a 20. He thought Alex Cora was pushing the red buttons. What are you on My name is Lauren. I'm 33. I didn't want my identity to be the smoking mom. My first experience with Jewel, I do remember being like, this is good. It's, it's, it's like a cigarette, but not. I don't miss smoking at all. Like I can officially say it grosses me out. Jewel is the tobacco alternative that delivers nicotine satisfaction without cigarette ash or lingering odor. Make the switch at JUUL.com slash sports. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Buy or sell. This is not a robbery. Uh, 
I don't know I worked against them, but it's pretty bad. They always kick our ass, so... It's not a robbery if they're always kicking our coolie. That's uh, Joel Embiid's view of Celtic Sixers. That was their second worst opening night loss in franchise history. Here's Jason Tatum's view of game one. Our best player didn't hit any shots tonight. We still won by 20. Gordon Hayward's first game back, and his hair was perfect. Tim, what are you buying? What are you uh, selling from the Celtics or the Philly? Or if Philly caught your eye, what are you selling from what you saw from that? Just the, the Celtics' depth is, is is crazy. They go about 10 deep or even more if they want to, and it doesn't even matter if Kyrie Irving and Hayward can't can't hit any shots. The main thing is Horford blocked Embiid three times, and Embiid always looks surprised when it happens, but Horford can defend him, and that disrupts the Philly offense completely. Then Yates? I was going to say the same thing. This battleship is fully operational, and it's kind of scary if you're the rest of the East. Nine guys doing double-digit minutes. Terry Rozier's black and sauce, plus minus is off the charts. This team is really, really good. It sounds basic, but that's pretty much it. And do you have a take from the Philly perspective, Clinton? Uh, I don't really love the way Embiid is talking at this point in the season. At all. You don't For love you. that he's saying that it's not a robbery? because I mean, he's speaking the no, truth there. No, show a little more confidence, playboy. You're the biggest man in the league. Let's get it done. Oh, I thought some might say he's, he's showing that he needs to be mo- that, that he's motivating the team to be better. Frank, how about you? Uh, Gordon Hayward hadn't played in 12 months. Kyrie Irving, six months. They go six for 26, and the Celtics still win by 18 points. They're a very good team. And I'll tell you this about Philadelphia. They're starting back court of Ben Simmons, Markel Fultz. Forget about making a three-pointer. They did not attempt a three-pointer. In today's day and age, how can you survive in the NBA playing that way? Jack and Matt? You know, you're right, Frank. Uh, Markel Fultz still can't shoot, and it matters. But you know what? Ben Simmons still can't shoot, and it doesn't matter. This kid is otherworldly. I know he's got to work on that perimeter, Jay, but he looked like Magic Johnson last night, the way he was distributing. I don't think we can make too much of this one game. Celtics transition, dition, ah, Celtics transition defense was terrible. Jason Tatum says our best player didn't hit any shots tonight. Are we sure? Maybe Jason Tatum's the best player. Yeah, right. yeah no, that, that's, that's a fair point. So, so real quick, Jackie, just specifically on, do you think Philly erred on not bringing in shooters this summer? Uh, not necessarily. They had some injuries, and I think okay. J.J. Reddick's going to work his way back okay. into that starting lineup because they were the best starting five in basketball last year when they were yeah. on the floor together. Especially for the last half of the season. And I'll say this, right. knowing the panel have today, uh, the hair on Gordon Hayward looked like he was about to have a pina colada at Trader Vicks. <laughs> right, right. We'll move on. NBA opening night after NBA opening night. 11 games. You know Melo's coming off the bench for the Rockets. And you know Jimmy Butler. That's not going to happen in Minnesota. Doncic and Aton debuts. Kawhi in Toronto versus the LeBronless Cavs. Clinton, which opener are you buying above all? To me, it's Doncic and Aton, the potential rookie of the year matchup. That kid has had so much hype coming in from Europe. I really want to see what's going to work. He looked great in the preseason. He's got Dennis Smith Jr., who's hopefully going to become a better player at the end, you know, in the backcourt. Love that Mavs team right now. See what they can do. I was having a little fun with Aiton's name, going Aton, and you followed me with it. I think it's closer to Aiton than Aton. But go ahead, Isola. Think about Kawhi Leonard, and we keep saying this, if he's healthy. But Toronto, the Toronto Raptors had the best team in the East until the playoffs. LeBron is gone, and you replaced DeMar DeRozan with Kawhi Leonard. Toronto, I know we talk all talk about Boston, but Toronto, assuming Kawhi Leonard is healthy and committed and ready, could be dangerous. Jackie Mack? No question, but I'm looking at the the new look Rockets who were one hamstring away from not only going to the finals but winning the whole thing. They lose Ariza, they lose they lose Luke Balmute. I don't know if they're as good a team this year, and they're playing a Pelicans team that was lousy in the preseason with Anthony Davis with a new agent, Rich Paul. Let's see what happens there. To Joshua. Clinton Yates got it right. The whole world is watching Mavericks and Suns tonight. Why wouldn't you? Uh, we got the youngest Euro League MVP ever, and DeAndre Ayton, who looks like the perfect center. We want to see which one of these guys is going to lead his team. So, all right, this is, this might be your one chance, Sam, to say that the whole NBA world is watching uh, Dallas. We'll move on. Buy or sell three. Cold game. Who said it? Ready? We're not getting up at four o'clock in the morning to tank it. Ain't really? nobody tanking. Tank it. Bill really? Belichick. Yeah. It says Gruden on the screen there. I guess that could have been either Gruden. Not Not only accusations of tanking, the website is Gruden Gone Yet has already been created. And the... (laughs) <laughs> this is from Forbes magazine. I love the, the, the math they had to do. Algebra, highest level of algebra to figure out yeah. that the investment right now is $100 million per win for John Gruden. Frank, by herself, the scorn and scrutiny right now being directed at Gruden. 
I think it's completely over the top. Can we allow the guy to get to at least eight games? And I don't know if it goes back to his TV work, to the fact that he won a Super Bowl with Tony Dungy's players in Tampa Bay. But it does seem like everyone is coming after John Gruden pretty early on in his time in Oakland. Hmm. Jackie Mack? Well, I think he invited a little bit of that scrutiny, Frank, though, because his first official major act was to tell Khalil Mack to, to hit the road, their best player by a mile. And Yeah, and I think he also had a certain air about him that rubbed people the wrong way, but I do agree with you on this. It's too early to just declare. It, it's, it looks like a disaster at first glance, but it's way too early to declare the whole experiment that. TC? Yeah, it's not too early to do much of anything. And this is a team that went to the playoffs two years ago when Carl was hurt, was in the playoffs last year in December. And now they add Jordy Nelson and they got John Gruden coming and they can't beat anybody. They got an overtime win over the Browns. That's crazy. Not too early to do anything. I love that expression, Kalish. Right? Yates, how about you? Yeah, it's not too early because you've guaranteed some insane deal to a guy who can't win any games. Press the panic button now if you're the Raiders because of that exact reason. He's signed on for way too long to make this reasonable. It's a huge problem. Commitment to excellence. <laughs> it's late pretty good. early around here, doesn't it? I love it, it when Kalish. you raise your eyebrows. I think thing. you're going to love the 35 on your scoring average, though, right? This is like intramurals. I mean, this is, this is, you haven't seen 35 in, uh, well, since 1970. <laughs> Yates, also done. I saw the McMullen show down next. That was a good show. As a young boy, Gavin loved playing football. He lived and breathed it, wanted to go pro. Why, he'd spent hours upon hours just practicing his touchdown dances. And one day... While getting fitted for bifocals, he realized he was never much good at throwing, or running, or catching, or even kicking. Yeah, Gavin's chances of playing pro football were looking like fourth and long. Very long. But he did hear how Geico could save him money on car insurance, so he switched and saved. Then he did kind of a touchdown dance. At least he was still good at that. I saw the McMullen good luck in showdown. Warriors rings are giving all other rings the finger. They're reversible somehow. <laughs> Frank, you like the new twist, or is it doing a little too much? That's fine. It looks like something Liberace would wear. I'll say this. I do like the fact that the Warriors introduced Kevin Durant last. A very small, subtle thing to embrace free agent to be Kevin Durant. I'm just looking at these rings, and I'm picturing a whole bunch of Warriors, maybe one named Draymond Green, in an Uber at 3 in the morning saying, you want to see how I flip my ring? And that thing is gone, baby, gone. Yeah, I don't, I don't get the reversible nature of it. it. It's more like a transform than is reversible. The part that reverses is the part you don't see. We'll give the point to McMullen. Showdown 2, Jalen Brown and Joel Embiid. This was the play of the night from basketball. When it happened, it was seismic. When you saw the replay... That it wasn't a dunk on MB, but a block by MB that happened to go in. It was kind of uh, life changing. And then when you saw the still photo, this was awe inspiring. So from the play to the initial reaction to the realization it wasn't what it was, and the still photo, how do you consider it all, Jackie? I'm calling it a block. Okay, it was a dunk that turned into a block, and it was very, very lucky on Brown's part. But I love Brown's attitude. He he didn't care what it was. He turned and stared down and beat afterwards anyway. Positive self-talk. Joel Embiid told Jackie McMullen after the game that it's technically a block. No, it isn't. It's technically a basket. By the way, Jackie McMullen was at the game. She wrote two stories, all you young people, and she won't need the next week off. That's how you roll. Old school. Wow, where are we going with this? Are you trying to win the point showdown, or you are just trying to give it away, Frank? (laughs) You gave it away. Point, FaceTime, Jackie McMullen. So here's a number for you. 1,054 games. That's how many games Carmelo Anthony started. He has never come off the bench in his career. He will do so tonight for the Houston Rockets. And I'm here to tell you, this is the place it's finally going to work. I know, I know, I know. 40% career last year, field goal shooting, 112th among fours in defensive plus minus. He's with friends. He's with people that can utilize him properly. It is going to work. This is where it's going to work. I believe nice he's, with about from us. he's with friends. He's with friends. How great is that? Thanks for being a friend today, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank-